Hey, hey, welcome back to the table. I'm excited because today it came in the mail today. It's Sans Resultat 3rd Edition. I know, right? It feels like just a few years ago we had 2nd Edition and now we got 3rd. Uh, but this is actually really good because we were getting ready, my buddy and I were getting ready to film some more uh, battle reports for ESR once the rules came out. And so they're here. So I thought I would do is take a look through with it and see what all is in here. I printed a couple things off the internet we can look at. So I'm very excited to, you know, take a look. Now I did flip through it a little bit earlier. Haven't read it yet. It's a lot to read for one evening. Well, for me, it's a lot to read. Uh, but it's hardbound. And I know that David talked about, uh, you know, soft bound, spiral bound, all that good stuff. And then I think that he's in a place where it's a darned if you do, darned if you don't. Some people like the soft spiral bound, some people prefer hard bound. So I'm not quite sure what he was to do to get the in-between happiness, but it's hard bound. Although I am curious if my local binder guy can actually do a spiral bound on a hard bound book, because that would be totally cool. Then I would have the best of both worlds. Uh, but let's look at it. Now, this is a really good book regardless. I know some folks like Spiral Bound because you can lay it flat. This actually has pretty good binding. I think that was one of David's goals with the book was to have binding to the point where you could lay it flat on your table. And uh, it's holding up pretty good. I'm gonna try not to abuse it too much, but you could lay it flat. So, you know, take the good with the bad and I think this is on the good side of things. It's nice looking. All right, what do we got in here? Well, there's quite a few things in here. There's a little introduction, what it is. There's a couple pages in here talking about what is old, new, little things. And then we get to the first major section. So this is a guidebook, The Age of Napoleon. This is really, really good. I know that I've had a few phone calls with David where he was asking me like, what. What would new players like? Now, he didn't do any of this based on things that I said. Like, I'm not taking credit. It's just that it really felt like he wrote this for me. Thanks. It's awesome. Uh, because this includes a lot of stuff that I was feeling like would really help new players. I myself am a new player to Napoleonics. I have some experience with Napoleonics. However, uh, I have a buddy who's very versed in Napoleonics. And so... It always was interesting to play games with him because he had a very deep understanding of some of the history, uh, some of the, the actors involved, if you will. And there's a lot of interesting stories that came out of Napoleonics that I had no idea. And this beginning part of the book, I think, is fantastic because it's a nice little brief encapsulation of Napoleonics history to help give some perspective to some of the battles that you will fight. It's a great place to start. Clearly, this is not everything you need to know about Napoleonics, but it's a great way to just give you some background before you can, you know, before you jump into uh, the battles and maybe sparks your interest to do more research and learn more. So, yeah, it's very cool. I thought that was a really nice touch to add. The second part of this uh, kind of like introductory guidebook, which I thought was really nice, not this part, I guess this is the second part. Here are the major factions involved, so it's nice to know who the combatants are. So there's a few pages here talking about them. This is the part. Maybe I guess that's part three. Military terminology. This is a fantastic portion of the book. This is a lot of the units and words and terms defined. A lot of this I've picked up along the way. Some of this I know from other games that I play. And uh, it was really cool in here to see that some of those terms that would be common to Napoleonics are mentioned in here. So you have your mounted uh, carabiniers, for instance. So French, here's what they call it. German, here's what they call them. Spanish. And I thought that was pretty neat. Light artillery. Again, here's how German, Polish, Span Russian, and Spanish would pronounce it. You know, might not include everybody. Here's some food artillery that French would call it, German would call it Spanish, reserve artillery. To me, I thought that was really cool because a lot of times, you know, 
again, coming into something, clearly different countries have different languages, but not knowing what they're referring to always, because sometimes you just see like a roster sheet and it says Legere, and you don't know well, what is that necessarily. Well, again, this terminology book includes a lot of that terminology. You're going to have to hit Google to learn how to pronounce because I still pronounce everything wrong. But I thought this is amazing. And it's not one or two pages. It's a pretty good portion of this introductory uh, portion of the guidebook. So really, really like it. Plus there's pictures. Uh, infantry, cavalry, middle guard definitions. They even had lifeguard in here. Uh, Major General, French Imperial Guard with a little definition and some terms. So it's very, very cool. Uh, there's the Swedish lifeguard. So at some point, you know, I will read through this and still not know how to pronounce it or remember it, but it's very, very cool. Uh, ooh, there's even Prussian Royal Lifeguard there. Cavalry, Artillery, Prussian Imperial Lifeguard. All of it. Oh, there's a Royal Lifeguard, Imperial Lifeguard. Yeah, so this is really, really cool. I like it. And it goes on for a few pages. The Free Corps, Guerrillas, Tatars, the Cossacks, National Guards, Partisans. Uh, so this, I think, is a really, really good portion of the book. I know that there will be some people who will think that maybe that should go at the back of the book. And that's, you know, a preferences thing. Uh, for new players, though, I don't think it's a bad choice to have it at the beginning of the book. Because this will give you some knowledge and reference for the battles that you're about to fight. So, okay, then you get into the rules. Now, if we're looking, so page 46 starts off with some basic ideas about the game, things you need to know, not the rules themselves necessarily, but I liked it. Here it mentions the uh, basics of the game, quick reference guide. Now, the one on here looks like it could be two pages, and I think if you print this directly from their website, the Wargaming Company. Uh, it does go on both pages. I printed this one. This one's in the scale of the 10 millimeter figures. And what it does is it puts some of the measurements, like movement rates, are here. And I thought it mentioned some uh, weapon range, but I guess it's just movement rates. Oh, it's important. Uh, I don't see any ranges for guns. We'll have to see what uh, shooty shooty looks like when we get there. Yeah, all right. But you're down to one page. Uh, if you remember the first game, it was uh, one document, two sided, but it looks like this is what you can fit it down to now is put the game on one page. That's pretty nice. Now, if you've played ESR before, this does not mean in any way that the game is not uh, detailed or has you, you know, um, trying to think complexity at all. Uh, this is actually a really good game system. I haven't read 3rd edition yet, so I'm very excited to see how it plays. But 2nd edition, they did have a to one document both sides, but here, one page. It doesn't make it less thoughtful or strategic. Uh, there's a lot of game here. I'm only mentioning that because I have played some games where they have like five, six, seven, eight pages of charts, depending on the game. That's on the light side. But for uh, Napoleonics type games, you know, some people equate complexity and how good the game is by how many reference charts you have. But this is actually a game where you feel like you're playing Napoleonics and it didn't have a whole lot of reference charts. So anyway, here's uh, what one of the new reference charts looks like. One side of one page. Perfect. Let's set that aside. Here is some pictures of the figures. Now... This I am very excited about. The figures are going to be fantastic. They're, I guess, a plastic resin -y type of print. I can't wait for them to come out. I just got tired with metal trying to file down everything all the time. These will come in like kits on sprues that you can cut them out. And just some sample renders. I think they look really good, actually. And one thing I liked is uh, for new people who are trying to learn all the terminology and what all the units should look like. They are um, going to put them in such a way that when you cut them from the sprue, you'll know what pieces go together. Uh, it's hard to explain. I think David kind of, he mentioned it to me and it made a lot of sense where like um, 
one unit might be on a sprue, for instance. So you know that everything you cut off that sprue is going to go on to like the base, for example. Everything is designed in such a way that it will all be grouped together. And that to me makes sense. So if you got like five guys, the five people will be in line. Uh, I don't know if it'll be exactly in the way they should be, but it'll be in, you know, as you cut them off, you can put them on the base and they'll fit where they're supposed to be. I, little things like that, which I think are great. So there's been a lot of thought and care put into the new miniature packages that they're going to sell. So I cannot wait to get some and put them to use. I also like some of the sample diagrams that they use now. Instead of just having the rectangular colored blocks, you now have like these top-down views of the miniatures. I mean, they're not painted, but I, I think it's a step up in far, as far as graphic re representation. Uh, as far as like what a ployed formation looks like, or a deployed formation, how it should look on the table. I think it's very classy and really shows you how things are supposed to be on the table. I think it's great. Then you got the rules for helping you play at other scales, game terms. Then you get into stat cards. This was the one thing that I was a little worried at first was, do I have to have these cards to play the game? Fortunately, everything you need is on the internet. Uh, for example, leaders. They do have leader cards. The leader cards will put uh, their statistics, some of the range, or range, but the uh, rules that they have. Or, if you're like me, uh, someday cards. But for now, I've gotten so used to having roster sheets with ESR 2nd Edition that to me this just makes sense until I can get the cards. But for now, you're going to have on the website for free, there's French, British, and Russian currently, and this is all the commanders. Also what's kind of cool is it tells you over here, did they make a card for a particular uh, ruler? I did notice as I was looking at some of the other leader countries, they got most of the leaders. There might be one or two that don't have a card, but then you still have the stats on a roster. So rosters are available for free. Or you can get the cards where it has all the information on there for that particular leader, if that's what you prefer. They also have then the formation stats. And again, those are also available for free. And they've got, I think, well, I'm trying to remember who all they had. I know they had French, British, Russians. I think they had another nation out as far as the, um, the formations. It could be... Going off my memory is not always the best thing. But anyway, here's some French. So it has Grenadiers, Chasseurs, uh, their rules over here. Like they got shock, and it just has a brief, what does shock mean? Their lights. So it has their traits over there. And then your basic combat stats that you need. So, wonderful. Oh, maybe there's your ranges. Hmm. Ranged threats. Open terrain. Embarrassing terrain. Hmm. Well, once I read this and, and get a good understanding of how this works, we'll play. All right, moving along, getting into a quick start. So out of the, there's like maybe 20 pages of rules. It goes from like, like right here, I would say, here's the start of the rule. So starting at about page 54, and it goes until you hit page 76, if I remember right. Okay, 78. So there's like mm, 24 pages of rules. That's really not that bad. And here is the quick start guide. And that's a couple pages. And that covers all of that. And it's yellow colored. Uh, then once that's done, you get into the command phase. So this is like going the in-depth way of the rules. Your command phase. Then it's got a few pages, again, color-coded for movement. And then color-coded here for the combat phase. And you got a few pages there. And then it goes back into talking about your commander traits and definitions of, like, unit traits. Perfect. Then you have the designer notes and commentaries, which I definitely encourage you to read. I read some of this on the website, some of the ideas of why things are going the way they are and so I want to read this again and, and uh, I, I don't know I 
I'm one of those folks where change is hard and just as you're starting to get used to you know something this comes along but I am very curious to understand some of the thinking and behind the reasons why so can't read that will probably be the first thing I read then you have the planning for war this will go in hand in hand with the documents on the website and no one's second edition the back of the rule book had a lot of these charts already for you which is fine but I don't have a problem with having unit stats on the website especially because they're free because as there are changes and I think one of the highlighted forum posts of the day I read today they had made a change on one of the sheets anyway so when you put it in print like this that's pretty permanent and if you have to change a stat or something like that your book is now out of date so by putting those commanders and uh, unit statistics on the website I think is fine I'm okay with that and here in the book though this gives you how the formations would break down so I know if I was doing the Prussians I would have you know a certain amount of infantry some artillery attached it kind of gives you a hierarchy of your unit building of course you can also use uh, pre-made scenarios and campaigns and speaking of scenarios right as we get past the planning for war we have some starting scenarios here's how to read the maps and then here's a scenario the mountain passage 1799 a surprise attack of 1800 river crossing of 1805 uh, exiting a defile fighting with trawl mountain passage again an envelopment uh, you know so you got like who the combatants are talks a little bit about the terrain uh, a little bit about the units that you would pick to be involved initial placements placement victory conditions so quite a few options here depending on what kind of terrain that you have and I don't think the maps are overly complicated this was another discussion that um, you know I've had with other people about maps is how de how much detail is too detailed I think that this is actually a pretty good compromise on maps it does look a little detailed but again if you have people who are new to the genre and maybe don't know exactly how the battlefield for this battle should really look I think this does a pretty good job of laying it out I know that I would put you know roads this way here's elevated uh, hills so I know how tall to make them where the tree should be I don't think it's overly cluttered but it gives you a pretty good idea of how you could set your train so I think they've done a really good job overall putting a lot of information in here for new players now you might say but if I'm a, a veteran player and already know all that I mean you still need the rules but it puts a lot of that information you already know in one nice book so overall I am very excited to dive into this and my buddy and I we were waiting to get our copy so we could read through and start figuring out how to play third edition so we could start doing some more battle reports so thank you much for tuning in I hope you're excited for ESR third edition as much as we are and uh, I'm not sure when we'll get some battles on the table but hopefully not too much longer from now all right thanks for tuning in and we will talk to you later bye